Well, I've been covering this story since around November of last year when it was announced the Oasis would be shut indefinitely. In the year or so since then, the site's future has been the subject of intense speculation across Swindon. Now it's been listed, the future of the Oasis seems more uncertain than ever. Seven Capital and Swindon Council, who run the Oasis, say that decision means reopening the site will cost more money and ultimately be more expensive. But the Save Oasis campaigners who've been fighting to save this iconic institution over the past year or so say they are absolutely delighted. The campaign was over the moon. The historic and had recognised the, the historic, the cultural and the architectural significance of the building. Personally I felt um, quite vindicated that everything the campaign had been saying turned out to be true. So obviously the application process took quite a while. Historic England took about nine or ten months to consider the application and ultimately approve it. During that time, were you and your campaigners concerned that the Oasis Dome may get knocked down? Who wouldn't be concerned, particularly as it took so long? But in the end, we are pleased that it was actually acknowledged for what it actually stood for. Why was the Oasis Dome and Pool listed by Historic England? So things are listed when they're found to be of special architectural or historic interest. And I think the Oasis just has that in spades, really. Uh, architecturally, it's this great glazed dome on a space frame, which kind of rises from the landscape on this grassy bank. I'm sure, obviously, it's a well-known building, particularly uh, in the southwest. Um, the dome itself, as I said, is a space frame and it's really technically sophisticated and has withstood that corrosive pool environment really, really well. Well, Swindon Council and Seven Capital have confirmed they will now try to find a sustainable and viable future for the Oasis that includes the iconic listed dome just behind me.